7,650 pounds. A big, big triple slide bunkhouse outside kitchen with dual bath entry. Mallard M33 just landed here at Haywood RV of Coldwater, Michigan. And to some folks, this thing actually might look pretty darn familiar. Mallard is what's called a uh, private label. Some places will want to tell you this is exclusively offered at their facility, but at the end of the day, this is literally just a North Trail under a different name. And the North Trail name represents the most successful series of lightweights produced by Heartland RV. Um, in a lot of ways, kind of their version-ish of a Keystone Passport kind of Surveyor by Forest River combo job. Overall, this thing is clean. They swapped this out for an even larger Montana five-slide beautiful luxury couples rig. And the best I've been able to discern is they had plans of like, you know, having the family come camp with them that I don't think kind of happened. Um, I didn't get a chance to hard verify that from the customer, but I've been doing this a while. I see a lot of the same stories roll through. And when somebody swaps out a very clean, very well kept, late model, barely used bunkhouse like this for a big giant luxury rig, it usually means like kids or grandkids didn't come with us as we planned. Now this is an extra long super slide with both that long U dinette as well as that trifold high to bed sofa uh, with breeze windows on the slide sides. But where you, you'll see a lot of little things happen here and there is like the slide side windows over there, the end windows, slide ends we'll say. They're huge, but they don't open for airflow. You look in here, you see a really nice stainless sink, but a T-molded countertop. There's a couple little interesting combinations here that I think the idea is to give you a lot of glitzy glitter eye candy. Like they're putting a central vacuum system right on the face of the kitchen island right here. But in my view, I think that the uh, collection point for that would be better served in the pass-through storage, like a fifth wheel, as opposed to the island. They're trying to put some eye-catching features where you can't miss them, and you don't always see everything else the RV offers. I am not saying this is a bad camper. I'm simply pointing out what it is and what it is not, so that you folks can make your own decisions about what it is and what it is not. Now, the kitchen slide here, all the credit in the world. They extended it so that that huge chunk of counter space over there there's nothing but cabinet drawer uh storage between it you know and you have a matching uh overhead cabinet above so they did a great job really giving this uh kitchen area here a very impressive amount of storage and prep space and right here on the island on the end you can see how there are power outlets where you can easily access them this does not have heat vents running through the flooring so it is a little bit easier to clean a little more pet friendly that way you might notice how the soft goods are not all chewed up scarred up frankly they barely look like they were ever used up uh, in any way shape or form now this is a bit of a shallow u dinette so you're not going to fit a ton of people around it it's a little bit smaller but it also means that the RV looks and feels a little bit bigger to walk through, which is another reason why they go with the uh, laminated mini vaulted ceiling on this. Um, it's very solid to walk on, feels very good. Uh, and by vaulting it a little bit, about two and a half inches, it opens it up pretty nicely. Now in the middle hallway area right here, you've got this big combination closet and or pantry, whatever you want it to be, with a lot of mechanical stuff all centrally located below, like uh, your furnace air intake, uh, your um, converter panel with your fuse boxes and all that, all right there so that God forbid you have some kind of service needs for the RV, they're all in one spot. Bathroom, as I mentioned, is a dual access. I am a little bit surprised to see the plastic stool here versus porcelain, but at the end of the day, it gets the job done, which is really its you know purpose, obviously. Well, the, the light from outside is blinding me, so let me turn over here. Vaulted ceiling also helps with the shower height. Um, it really helps open it up in here to make this look and feel uh, a little bit bigger. Obviously, protective shower wall surround paneling. They do drop from stainless to a conventional plastic sink in the uh, bathrooms here, but again, it still functions. There's nothing wrong with that. I do like the little detail, though. We do have a locking bathroom door. A lot of brands who build this uh, layout or layouts with a bathroom entry door, that door will deadbolt. But this door doesn't always lock, and here you can see it does. And instead of a sliding pocket door, we do have a swinging privacy door. And as we step inside, you'll spot the second air conditioner that the previous owners added after market to give this 
big triple slide sucker, the cooling power that frankly it, it really needs. Um, this is what I call a big kid bunk. It's a wider bunk on top, handy for taller people who want to sleep uh, corner to corner. Uh, big rear window in the back gives us some excellent airflow and visibility as well. Now this upper bunk here does flip up and down. You can see the little brackets right there. So if you want to expend your daytime space, you've got these little converticube things down here. These can each fold open into uh, roughly about the size of that big kid bunk that I mentioned earlier. Or you can uh, use them together like a pseudo king, or you can, you know, flip them up like that for daytime use. Pretty good storage in here, too. Let me open one of these up. You've got a nice pair of hanging closets on both sides of the bunkhouse entertainment area. To give you an idea of how deep that is, you see how deep that cabinet is in relation to the entertainment center. Um, you also have a pair of handy drawers below. So I know moms and dads everywhere appreciate the fact that right there I'm looking at that I'm saying one is socks and one is underwear. Go nuts, kids. <laughs> Moving forward. The uh, entertainment is, and this is a little interesting. Um, I don't know if this RV didn't include a TV from the factory or if it only included this tiny job of a TV right there or if that was added after market. But they certainly didn't hurt themselves. Evidently, entertainment was a secondary concern for the previous owners of this RV. Um, that being said, the beautiful new Montana uh, fifth wheel that they purchased with that monstrously large HD TV and that thing, they are not going to be uh, hurting for entertainment value whatsoever. Um, the TV can spin around, however, to face the bedroom. And you see that you have yet another actual swinging hinged bedroom door as opposed to a more common sliding door. And this is one of the few times I really do like the swinging door better because if it was a sliding pocket door, you always have to slide that door open or closed to be able to spin this entertainment center. But you don't have to do that now. You just pull that little silver pin down there, whoosh, spin it around, it'll face your master bedroom back here. Now the RV's huge. All of this, you know, RV was focused on opposing slide, big living space with that, um, you know, slide out bunk room. Uh, the master bedroom here is very much a minimalist type uh, design, but effective. I do like how they do their side stands on this brand though. I like where that power outlet is and I like those nice open stands where you're very, you know, uh, CPAP, phone charger friendly, whatever. And I do like that we have a light switch for the ceiling lights in here. And again, of course, that TV can spin around for evening viewing. So up front here, we're greeted with that exaggerated three-quarter nose cap. And I'm not saying exaggerated in a derogatory fashion. I just mean that it, it kind of puffs out at you so it really catches your eyes there. Down below, we do have that stone guard to help keep everything looking good. Now, very easy to miss right here is the location of their portable solar prep point. Um, it's kind of black on black, so when I'm backed up there, it's pretty easy to miss. Now over here, you notice you got a little bit smaller door on this side, but the fact is it's because you got that water heater there. You have a very large front cavity. Now this RV has uh, power corner jacks, and those uh, the controls for those are actually located in that front pass-through compartment, um, away from you know common passers-by and and you know curious hands from little kiddos and things. Uh, the underbelly of this is enclosed. Uh, it is forced air heated. So uh, this is not what people often ask, is it a four seasons RV? This is an extended season RV. The wide stance stability axles are one of the smartest things they could have done on a trailer that is this darn long. Something a lot of people are not aware of. Like they'll say, well, my half ton can pull uh, 9,000 pounds. And there's a lot of people that are going to go, yeah, absolutely. You could pull that trailer all the time because it, it weighs less than that. But the fact is, this is a really long trailer. And if you have a short wheelbase half ton, it may really struggle to tow this thing, even with heavy duty anti sway control. Sway control is a supplement, not the fix, okay? Well, those wide stance axles help you cheat the wheelbase, to put it very overstatedly simply. Um, the outside shower location on this is really smart. It's on that rear wall. It's right. It's that black box next to the right hand tail light. I think it's a great spot because it's you can use it to like clean stuff off. It's like a convenience station, or you can hose the kids off if they've been swimming in the lake and they smell like turtle guts, and then they can hop in the uh, shower via that direct bathroom entry door there, and you can get them cleaned off before they ever stomp their feet through the rig. 
I do really like the arrangement of this outside kitchen as well. Bumper mount grill, you can see obviously still here, still included. Um, the RV's so long that they didn't, you know, really have the opportunity to put a dedicated awning over this, but with that full, uh, you know, height door, the big door on the big outside kitchen, it'll act like enough of an awning for you. Looks like it is ready for a TV outside if you are so inclined. Bigger fridge, real sink with real drain, and this extension counter right here. I'm all about this thing. There's, I, I've had people trade in RVs for a lot of reasons. Never once because it had too much counter space. That is a cool, cool feature right there. Now, a lot of times when people see a slide out under an awning with the awning closed, they can only imagine how it's gonna destroy all their useful patio space. So I specifically wanted to have this awning open. I was able to do so, and thankfully, we were parked just far enough behind that fifth wheel up there that I could get the awning fully extended. And you can see how there is still plenty of room here for a picnic table. But what's really smart, a lot of times when there's a kitchen slide like this, the awning lights will be at the base of the awning. You would lose your patio lighting. But here on this RV, they're actually mounted in that awning tube up there so that you can still use them in the evening. And that gas door right there is a handy little auto rain dump feature. Quick look at the slam latches and why not just peek our heads through the uh, opposite side of the pass through while we're right here and walking through a little bit of an RV corridor. And there you have it. I haven't really seen anything on this that concerns me. Like I said, these were really, really good quality folks who traded this in and bought that Montana. This is a sharp rig that just simply didn't function for the intended purpose. The folks camping lifestyle turned out to be different from how they originally planned. A wise man once told me every time you make a plan, God laughs at you, and I've yet to prove that fellow wrong. So, short of that, give us a call. The fact is, this is a late model, uh, very well kept, could be, uh, it could qualify for same as new RV financing, ladies and gentlemen. So a near new RV at a used RV price tag. You know, I mean, that's, that's just an awesome combination of features right there. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone.